Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today I have some really exciting news. We've actually come out with a brand new video, a free tip video, where I give you my five tips that I've kind of come up with over the past few years of painting, and I share them with you. It's really a lot of fun, and that video is completely free. So the way you get that is you just go to the link on the screen or down in the description to my website, sign up for the email newsletter, and then you get the video for free. Now, if you're already subscribed to the free newsletter on my website, then you've received your email with the link to the free video. So go ahead and watch it, it's a lot of fun. All right, let's get started on our painting. We'll start off today here with a two inch brush and a nice soft blue color. Color. Okay, with this right up here to the top and I'm going to block in my little sky. Don't need a whole lot of sky today. I probably should actually stop because I know I want mountains here and do a sketch of the mountains. I should probably do that. I'm not going to since the brush is in my hand, but if you'd like to go ahead and sketch in your mountains, you can. I'm just going to go down to where I think they are and I can fill the sky in a little bit more later. There. Okay, a little more blue up at the top. Yeah, there we go. I need I need just a little more contrast because we're gonna do some beautiful, beautiful clouds, big clouds. So gotta have the contrast. This is just a standard blue sky day. A lot of fun to paint. Next with a little bit of white, blue, and black on our filbert brush, it just creates a very beautiful soft blue gray color. I'm gonna work on our clouds up here. And as you can see, I went ahead and just spent a few minutes working on some mountains. Just a, just a simple sketch. You guys know how I like to do those. They work out so well. How can you skip the sketch? They just, they help so much. There. And I also see I put the sky down a little lower than I maybe would have, but it doesn't make a lot of difference in this one. And I wasn't worried about it because this is gonna be an extremely misty painting we're gonna have more mist than normal, that's for sure. So, I wasn't as worried about it. I know everything is gonna be soft, and a softer painting is generally not quite as difficult to work with when you have a little bit more paint on the canvas. All right, so now I've wiped down a lot of this sky area, the clouds with a paper towel, that of course removes the loose oil, gets a little bit, a little bit more dry, kinda not so slippery. There, and what pigment's left in here is really stuck in the canvas. There's not a lot of loose paint floating around on the top. That's, that's really important to know. Okay, here we go. This is what's gonna make this cloud bright. Otherwise, I'll forget it. And how many of us have painted a cloud that has come out extremely blue-gray? <laughs> and I know it's a lot of you guys because I hear you tell me about it all the time. And this is one of the best things you can do to get around that just simply wipe down the area. And then look, it sticks in. <laughs> the paint has no choice but to stick. There's nothing here to mix with. See that? Now I'm gonna go ahead and just, with my detail brush, drop in uh, the silhouette of a little mountain up here. I don't care about the bottom. That doesn't make a bit of difference. We're gonna do a lot of mist. Only worried about the little silhouette of it. No idea what color I'm using. It's just a mixture of everything up here in the sky. A little black, a little blue. A little white, touch red into it, but I'm just, I'm using and mixing over the paint here, using what I've got up in the sky so that it all feels like one painting. Good. Okay, there's my silhouette. Good. I like it. Now, let me grab another brush, probably a filbert, and just select a nice little soft blue color, mostly white, a whole bunch of paint down here we can just use up, and I'm going to roll in my mist. And this is the way we're going to develop the background. Paint a little bit, roll in some mist, and just repeat that until, until we have a decent little background. It's up to you how hard you want the top. I, you know, I want it fairly hard because I want to be able to see it. I'm going to have contrasting soft and sharp areas. There. All right, now I've just been working on this little bit of an outline here to the larger mountain. Still using my small brush so I get nice, tiny, tight effects. Okay, I'm gonna actually change brushes here because that's a little too slow going down. Let me pick up a little bit of black and brown, a touch of blue, and of course blue and black make a little bit of a green, so I'll throw a touch of red into it to counteract the green. There we go. Okay, now, Right over here, you see, I just spent a couple minutes with a nice warm, almost like a peach color, and I just developed a little bit of a mid-tone there. That's not the highlight, just the mid-tone. 
what that is doing is it's, see, it's playing the warm and cool color game, <laughs> which is a fun game to play when you're, when you're painting. I'm balancing my warm and cool colors throughout the entire composition. At least that's, that's sort of the plan. We'll work on doing that today. And it's going to make this whole painting come out really nice. There, it's going to be really interesting. And I'm just getting myself as much detail in here as I can. The mountains are the point of this painting. Nothing else is really that important. Okay, this is beautiful. These are rocks that are coming down the blue areas. That's going to be snow. I'm trying my best to do tight and small effects. The smaller your effects are, the better. You cannot over detail this mountain and this mountain because these are sort of the feature of the painting. They're getting to where they're pretty close. Hard to over detail something like that. All right, now that we're now that we're done blocking in that mountain, let me just grab our filbert brush here, load it up with a beautiful soft blue. Touch red into that blue makes it just a touch purple, which is nice. And we're going to maybe not do purple over everything, but maybe over some of the areas we'll we'll have that bit of a purple cast. See there's blue and purple. I have no idea if you can see that. That's so subtle, but I can see it here in person. So do it when you're painting at home and you'll know exactly what I mean. All right, now I'm going to kind of just think about where I might want these little areas of snow. Actually, that needs to be significantly darker. So watch here. Take a little blue, take a little blue and red here and mix them together. Make it darker. Yes, that's nice and dark. Try this out. Much better. Okay, so we have some areas that are dark and we have some areas that are not as dark. These dark areas, they kind of go up against the sky. They add a little extra contrast. You don't want what looks like a highlight up there. Good. Now I'm going back to the lighter, the lighter shadow snow. And I'll start working this in and around this mountain. I don't want it all that dark. There's a good spot right there. Beautiful. That's all it takes. Doesn't take a whole lot. Nice. Now I'm going to take our blender brush and really create some amazing mist up here. We were doing it with the filbert in the background, as you recall, but now we're going to do it with the little blender and it's going to be even more, even more soft and transparent looking. Cause watch with the blender, you cannot do this with the, with the filbert, but with the blender, you can just sort of drift it right up and over that mountain. If you do that with a filbert, oh, you're taking your chances, but the blender brush is super soft. So I think you'll, you'll find it not so hard really to, to do a lot of these effects, even over a wet background. Now, as you can see, I have a basic sketch here of our foreground and that's good because that helps us kind of map out where it's going to be. It's not very big. Now I'm going to take a soft blue gray color, very similar to everything we've been using in this whole painting. And I'm going to drop in some evergreens. And these are really fun to do. You can make them actually fairly tall. Maybe I think, I think we should do them spindly. Actually, I think that'd be super cool. You always got to find new ways to, to do things. You don't want to do them the same old way over and over again. How boring is that? I think we're going to do some more spindly trees because simply the reason is it looks fun. It sounds like fun there. And we don't do that very often, do we? There. So you can do them with this brush. You can do them with a the detail round. Doesn't make much any difference at all. You can do nice fat trees if you want to. It's just, you know, absolutely anything that, that you feel like doing is going to be just fine. That's sort of not the whole point of this, is it? Okay, maybe over here. Let's start working on our little trees. I'm just going to touch and pull and make sure they don't get too fat. There. Now it's time to drop on just a little bit of highlight up here. So I'm going to be very careful and just dab on a bit here and there. This is the snow. This is still not the highlight to the, you know, the actual rock. That's not this. All right. Maybe right in here. And you kind of just look at your blue areas and stick just a bit out. Always reload and keep that brush fresh. Wipe it on a paper towel almost every time you reload it. Otherwise you'll just have, a muddy mess up here. Nobody really wants a muddy mess. 
Okay, I'm thinking right about here. Maybe we'll just sort of set a little bit of color down. Oh yeah, and blend it in. Create soft edges that way. The more you rub it, obviously, the softer it gets. So keep that in mind as you're going. That's kind of a standard rule of painting. There. Maybe right in through here, just a touch. Like the light's kind of filtering through that area. Good. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop in here just a bit of highlight to the face of this mountain, and I'm not going to overdo it. I just need a bit here and there, and if you go too much, well, then it will be kind of uninteresting. There, just to create a little bit of light there on the face of the mountain. If it gets, if it gets to where it's kind of slippery, and this looks actually really good. We're doing pretty well here. But if yours is being slippery, then what you can do is simply wipe it down with a paper towel and your problem will be solved. It's really that easy. Okay, soft strokes. This is a soft brush. It shouldn't cut through the paint. You should be able to layer paint over paint without it uh, scratching through to the canvas or anything like that. This is so soft. You gotta do it with a soft brush if you want fine, fine texture like this. And that's what I want today. See that? Look at how little it's mixing. Now I'm going to work here with my three-quarter brush to drop in some mid-tone. We'll start with the mid-tone here to the large mountain on the left. <laughs> here we go. This is really kind of cool. And I'm using very subtle browns for starters just because it's a good place to start. Got to start somewhere. <laughs> there we go. Have you ever noticed how painting when you're painting, starting can be tough, but then once you're going, it's really pretty easy. I had a lot of my students sort of work with that, struggle with that. And the way you kind of get around it is just jump in. If you need somebody to stand behind you and push your hand into the canvas, <laughs> find somebody. It's fun. Okay, now I'm going to show you something that's really weird. I've got my liner brush and I've got no oil in it. Just, just paint. And I've loaded it. See, look, I've loaded it all the way probably about three quarters of the way back. Don't load it all the way back. And I'm, oh boy, this is the way you learn how to do new things. I'm just playing around here. And it started to work, so I wanted to show you. I'm taking this brush and I'm setting it down. Here, let's do it up here. I haven't done it up here yet. And I'm kind of mushing it, flattening it. Oh boy, this is kind of out of control. I have very limited control over this because the bristles are so long. And I'm also leaving just a hint, just a hint of texture, very little, nothing like a palette knife. I mean, it's just super subtle, but what this is doing though is creating more rough areas and look at that, see what happened there by accident, all that. All of this is kind of happening very quickly. I'm just playing here and, and it's starting to work, so I'm going to just go with it and see what kind of an effect we get. I can always mess around with it. I just wanted to show you what I'm doing because <laughs> This is kind of cool. You should play with it too and see if you can see if you can make it work even better. You see loading multiple colors there on the brush because you can't mix when you're trying to work with a liner brush. Thick paint, it doesn't mix at all. So I don't know. Maybe this is just something to play around with. I'm gonna I'm gonna use it for a few more minutes and I can always clean anything up. I just <laughs> wanted to show you kind of what I was doing here. Always experimenting, trying to find new ways to make things work. Now I'm back to the detail round and I'm going to just drop in some of the final shadow snow patches to this mountain. And uh, as you can see up here, I did a little bit of a extra peak that's sticking forward and that creates an extra layer in the mountain and I think that just looks nice. We've destroyed most of our snow areas, so I'm putting them back in. I'm actually putting them back in with harder edges than they had originally. So I was gonna have to kind of touch up anyways, so this is fine. <laughs> I went a little overboard with the other techniques, so I changed back to my, my detail round, and I was able to smooth out some of the areas, leaving some of the detailed areas. It was getting a little busy, if you know what I mean. So there's a balance. Boy, painting large mountains are it's really not super, super difficult, but if you, if you don't know what you're doing, you can kind of get lost. And in my case, I'm just playing around, so trying to have fun and learn new things. There. This detail round is good, though. If you just stick with this only, you'll be fine. 
Now I'm gonna spend just a couple seconds here working on the foreground areas. I threw a little bit of white down, a little bit of blue for a frozen lake. And now I'm just, I'm just brushing in a little bit of snow. And you can see that this was really not a big deal. I'm really understanding the whole foreground area in hopes that it won't take away from the mountains. Now one of the last things I wanna do up here is dot in a couple of little evergreens. I'm going to start with my filbert. I'll probably end up finishing with the detail round brush. There. See how I can just use it to work my way across these little evergreens. Don't get them too big or bulky. There, you can kind of use the side. Pull them in and out like that. But see how I'm leaving them? Leaving a lot of room to finish them with my little round brush because you can you know, you can get a nice effect with this, but I think I need something a little bit more detailed to hold, to hold up to the background, because the background's pretty detailed. Now the last thing we're gonna do here is just detail out this foreground. And I'm doing it with the little pointed round brush. And there, <laughs> just dropping in a little bit of, a little bit of snow onto these trees. You can see I did a little reflection very quickly. But look at the composition overall. You see how it's a nice balanced composition? It's not just like a tree on the right, tree on the left, and call it good. Now, nah, you know, do small trees, large trees, but just off center. And it, look, you can kind of almost work your way back into the valley. It's much more attractive that way. So make sure that when you're plopping your little evergreens down, you don't, you don't get into any kind of a, well, uninteresting composition. Make sure everything is always kept as interesting as possible. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out my website, my DVDs, and also my brush line. And thanks for watching.